welcome back to my channel today I'm gonna show you guys how to make a pattern for a swag valance okay so um, the first thing that I'm gonna be doing is just to show you now the material that I'm using I actually went ahead and cut it already just to save time now I want to have a, a swag that is 42 inches wide however in order to get that you would have to work out the measurement now I have actually went ahead and worked out my measurement before so I'm basically just using a 60 wide by um, 42 inches long now I want my swag to drop 18 inches however you got you're gonna need some extra inches and basically all I did was add on 6 inches however to get it to fall um, at 18 inches you're going to be using two times the fullness meaning 18 times 2 which would be 36 inches and then I added on an extra 6 inches for the allowance and also for the extra that you would actually need at the bottom now I just explained how to get the 42 inches for the length however for the width which as I said I cut at 60 inches in order to figure out why you are going to be needing 60 inches of fabric you basically work out how wide you want the, um, the swag to be and as I said I want my swag to be 42 inches wide now in order to get 42 inches wide when once the pleats are done you need to cut your fabric at 60 and the reason why you're going to be going 60 inches is that once you take once you do all the folds for the pleats you're going to if you use a 60 inch you're going to fall in and you're going to end up with 42 inches wide and I basically just wanted to use the full length of the fabric because the fabric was already 60 inches. So using the 60 inch um, fabric, if I'm going to be getting 6 and I'm using 6 pleats for this, it went, once I take out my 6 pleats, the width of it, once I do the, the, the folds, I should say, once I do the folds for the 6 pleats, it's going to finish off at 42 inches. So basically that's what I'm going to do. You're going to have a little bit of extra However, once you cut it down and once you sew it, it's going to finish off at that. So, the first thing that you're going to do is to fold the 60 inch into 30 inch. So, you're going to fold it this way. So, now it becomes 30 inches by 42 inches. And what you're going to do is to pin it to hold it in place. Right now the breeze is blowing and I have to use the natural light so I have to open the door so for me I'm just going to get some pins and pin it in place. All right. to be working out how you're going to be cutting now what you're gonna do is the center once you have folded it into into the 30 inches you're going to put a little notch right at the center this is just to mark your, where your center is going to be and again you guys it's on the edge that is folded into so the edge that is that will now be 30 because you have folded it over you're going to be putting a little notch there then you're going to be measuring from here now 
I like to work my swag into three equal parts. Now, in order to get the three equal parts, basically all I do is take the final measurement that I want and I divide that, that into three equal parts. Now, I want to finish in 42 inches. All I did was just to divide 42 by 3 and you're going to end up with 14 inches. Now, remember the fabric is folded. So, from here. In order to get the 14 inch, you're just going to be measuring 7 inch from where the middle is. So from where the middle is, you put, you measure 7 inch and you stick a pin right at the 7 inch mark. Now guys, when you're folding the pleats on the swag, you're going to need a little fallback um, from where the fold is going to start. So you're going to be measuring another seven inches and that is because you're just going to be needing all of that extra and remember it's going to be folded this is all of this this um second one is going to be for the extra where the fold is going to be now all of the other measurements will be done from this particular point so if you have a pen or a pencil or whatever tool that you're working with you just mark that because that is where you're going to be um doing the measurement from in order to get the angle okay guys so i rose it so you guys can see a little bit better i realize you can't really see me but you can see what i'm doing a little bit better now in order to work out the pleats usually for the first pleat um that is coming from where the fold is going to start at the top i usually use three and a half inches and then I use like five or six inches depending on how deep I want the piece to go. But for today, I'm going to be using five inches, right? Now, all you're going to be doing is check up how much piece is. Now, as I said, I'm going to be using six pleats for this project. So, all you're going to be doing is adding all of the inches together to find how you're going to actually make the angle going at the side. Now, in order to get the angle... Here is what you're going to be doing. You're going to be measuring along the side. You're going to be measuring from the top here along the side, which is going to be for the length. So along the side, which is going to be for how much it's going to drop, you're going to check up how the pleats. Now, all you're going to do is check up how much. Now, normally, if you were doing all of the pleats on the same size, you're going to just be adding five um multiply by six however one of the pleat is going to be three and a half inches so that means that you're going to add five multiply by five to get the 25 and then you're going to add the three and a half inches which is going to give you 28 and a half inch now what you're going to do is from the top where you have the fold remember the center is here which you just marked you just marked here where is going to be um, the 14 inch and you mark here which is going to be where the other 7 inch goes. So from here to here, 7, which when it's fold out, give you the 14 inch. And from here, another 7 inch. So you're going to be marking along this line. And from the edge here, you're going to be measuring the 28 inches. I'm going to have to get my my tape measure because this is only 24 inches now you're going to be going down at 28 and a half inches and you're just going to be marking that so you go down 20 28 and a half inch you mark that but after you mark that you're going to need a few more extra inch just like how you as i said earlier you're going to be needing at least six more inches to get the fold here you're going to add back your six inch so i'm just going to be adding back the six inches here and i'm just going to be marking that now in order to get the angle what you're going to be doing is marking from where you have your the six inch that you just add on so you're just going to be making a little mark there and then from here coming all the way up to where you have your second seven inch you're going to be making your angle now this isn't long enough okay guys i'm going to use this to help me because this is a bit short so as i said from where you put the, the mark for the six inches that you added on you're just going to be connecting that to the last 
seven inch that you marked and you're just going to be making a line going there now you guys this is the angle that you're going to be cutting on now in order to mark out how you're going to catch your pleat from the top you're going to start marking out your pleat on the angle so the first thing that you're going to do i'm going to just put a pin right here the signal where i'm going to be and you guys you can use some little notches now for for where i had the first seven inch which is going to fall out to create the 14 inches i'm just going to put a notch right there so from here to here when it's sold out that is going to be the middle part of it now where i have the second seven inch i'm also going to put another notch right there okay so there i have another notch now the next thing that i'm gonna do you guys i am going to be marking on the angle how i'm going to be putting the pin so starting exactly from the top you're going to be marking out your first pleat and as I said I usually use three and a half inches so you're just going to be marking three and a half inch and that is where your first pleat is going to stop and then from there on I'm going to be going five inches down so there you have five ten fifteen 20 25 now all of this is just going to be the extra and you're gonna need it so don't don't worry about that so now you're gonna check check back to see if you have um the um, correct amount so from your 5 10 15 20 25 and then the, the um three and a half inches so that is going to take care of your pleat now i'm just gonna leave that i'm not gonna do anything to that as yet what you're gonna be doing is to figure out how you're going to make the curve now down here you're gonna need a curve connecting from this end well let me shift this a little bit now you're gonna need oh it can't show however you guys from this end here to where the, the, the stop is to where the pin is right here and this is where the um, the six inches finish you're going to need a curve so you're just going to be doing a, a curve it doesn't have to be a great curve you don't even have to use a pencil you can probably just use your um, scissors and curve it on your own but you're just gonna need a curve however when you're sewing and thing it is going to change a little bit especially like when you're sewing so don't worry about that you just create a little curve and that is where you're going to cut off to get to get rid of that extra Okay guys, the next thing that you're going to do is to cut all of that. Now, for me, let me cut this off first. So I'm just going to be cutting the little curve that I just created. And there you have all of that little extra piece coming off. I'm just going to be um, pin that down. It's very windy. And then I'm just going to be cutting the angle going all the way down. Okay, so there you have it. And you're just going to be moving this. Now, this is what you have that you're working with. And I'm going to shift this up just a little so you guys can see all the edges. Let me move that. So this is what you're, you're, you're working with now. So what you're going to be doing is wherever you have um, a mark for each of the pleats. And let me, you guys, um, you want to make sure that it's... Both pieces are laying down flat. For me, as I said, it's very windy. So I have to pin it down just to not let it not um, lift up. But what I'm going to be doing is to be putting some notches on. 
So, wherever I have each of the pleats marked out. So, I'm just going to be making some little notches. So, right where I have um, the three and a half mark, I'm going to be putting a little notch there. Where I have the first five. So, you're just going to be sure to put in all your notches. Because that is going to be, and as I said, make sure that it's pinned down flat on each other because right now the, the breeze is blowing mine. But basically all you're doing is just to um, ensure that you mark where each of the pleats are going to be. Right? And there you have it, little notches to signal where each of the pleats are going to go. So there you have each of the pleats and it's six feet. One, two, three, four, five, six pleats. So now you can remove your pins and you can open it up. But what you're gonna be doing, if you're working on a particular fabric that is not, um, what you can do is crease the center of it before you remove your pins. I should have done that before I lift it up. But basically you're just gonna be creasing. Now remember you guys, this is the pattern. So you want to crease it because once you open it up, you're going to be making a mark going right down the center of it. So if you can crease it before you remove your pins, go ahead and do that. But once you open it up, you guys, this is how it's going to be looking. No, the camera, it can't really pick up the whole entire thing once it's open up. But what you're going to be doing is from where you make the notch, right the middle notch remember the middle knot that middle notch that we made at the, at the top of it you're just going to be putting a mark there and if you have creased yours you should see where the bottom fall and then you're just going to be getting one line going straight down straight down the middle of it now this is just to help you when you are making the pleats uh, the line should come down um, it, it should come down in a straight line right so there I have it now what I'm gonna be doing is to work on the pleats however I'm not sure how I'm going to set the camera because I need to show you guys how the pleats is going to be work on and how it's going to look properly so let me adjust the camera Okay guys, we're going to be putting the fabric onto a piece of cardboard. However, if you have a piece of board that you can use, go ahead and use it. I normally just use this piece of cardboard. And as you can see, well, I don't think the camera can pick up. It has a whole lot of pinholes from previous, previous projects that I've worked on. However, this is what I normally use because it can take the pins and I don't have to worry about breaking my pins. So I'm shooting them into a board, the cardboard does the job just well however let us begin what I have here let me brighten it a bit I have this line that I normally use it has a whole lot of pin pin marks there but this is normally where I use as my center I'm just trying to brighten it so you guys can see it okay so here you have the center and what you're gonna do is remember the top of it that which we had used so this is the top and remember it was fold so you have the middle of it right now on the side that you went ahead and put the mark on so that is the side where you have the, the line going all the way down that is the side that you're gonna be working facing up so you'll be able to see what you're doing as you're working along so you're gonna take the middle of it you stick the pin there and you stick it to where you would have marked out as your middle that you're using. So I'm just going to be sticking it there. And you want to be working from the top of the board here or the top of the cardboard, whatever it is that you're going to be using. So you work from the top. And there I just stick my first pin. Then where I have my middle, and if you guys remember, and if you guys realize, you can see that it's going to fall where I have this that is just because originally when I was doing the cardboard I did it based on the dimension of where the edges were going to be so you can see that they actually the notches actually fall right there so I'm just going to go and stick a pin here and stick a pin here and as I said you're going to be working from the top of the cardboard so it's just to be a guide for the first um 
pings, it's going to change a bit when you're going up for the remainder of it. Now guys, these pins, right, that I just put in, you don't have to, you can just do the middle one only and then after you start making the pleats, you will be able, because you you already make the notch here so you know where it's falling. However, as I said, the time is very windy for me, so I'm just going to be making there. Now, to make the first pleat, what you're going to be doing is from here, you come all the way down. And you're just going to be, just a few inches down or so, you're going to make the first piece. So you just pull it up to make the first piece. But then you're going to take this. Because you see, you see what happens once you make a little pleat here and you take up this, automatically you see it start getting an angle. So if you feel like it come too far down, you just go up a little bit more. But however, that is how it's done. And whatever you do to one side, you do to the next. So let me shift over this so you guys can have a better look. So, the step is, you come here, you pull up to make your first pleat, you take the first one, which is a three and a half inch pleat, and you curve it here, and you're going to find that this goes all the way over. It goes all the way over past the top of the, the, the board, right? So, you just go ahead and you put that down, and you stick stick the pin in now what you can do is use the, the pin that is already here however i'm not gonna do that as i said the time is so windy right so i'm just gonna be pinning right that right there and there i would have the first side however as i said whatever you do to one side you do it to the next so you wanna hold that you take the, the edge here the first one again and you do your fold and that is going to fall oh lord the wind is so heavy that is going to fall right there and again you take a pin and you're just going to be sticking that in and you can see the first pleat is already formed and it's that easy the second pleat you're doing pretty much the same thing you come down a little bit and remember you guys always start from the center and that is just because you want to be able to manipulate this as you're going up so let me pull it over so you guys can see when you do make that little pocket for the pleats it, from the center, it helps you to create the angle for the fold for the next one. However, you guys, when you're putting down these pleats, let me pull it out so you guys see, you're not going to be overlapping. You do not overlap. Wherever the back of this pleat start, you're just going to be um, putting your next pleat there. So you go so, you go here, there you have your pleat. It's going to overlap slightly, but not that much. And you go and you put, put in your pin. Now you want to keep your pins in a line. So you actually have a straight line as you go out. However, you do not want to be pinning and when you find that you're pinning coming down in a line. You want to pin and still using the board or the cardboard as a guide, you have that going out with the pins just the same. And as you... As you go along, you're going to find that the line which you have created is going to be falling one behind the other. And that's how you will be able to know whether or not you're actually doing it properly. Okay guys, so for the next split, it's pretty much the same thing. Using the center, you hold it again. And you take, let me push this over so you guys can see. You take where you have the notch for the next fold. To be for the next pleat to come in you hold that and you're doing the same thing going up and again you're not going to be overlapping it too much you're just going to be um you can even go back afterwards and measure to ensure that you have equal space in between but again as i said you're gonna be pinning and be pinning in a line so i'm just gonna go and do the rest of the pleats
okay guys so this is what it's going to look like once all of the um, pleats are done however you can go back over the pleats and tighten them a bit so that they look a little better before you do your cutting so I'm gonna go and go over mine just a little bit to um, ensure that they are done to the best way I can get them done before I do the cutting because you're gonna need to cut off all of that going straight across to create the jagged edges so yeah this is it this is how um, it's gonna look but whenever you're doing this and you're making the pleat and you get to this section where you actually finish making the pleat itself you wanna do something like that you wanna take it and look at it first before you do your cutting and probably measure um, from here for me I, as I said before I want to get um, 42 so I might measure from the middle to out here and then I'll try and get 21 inches on both sides before I do my cutting okay so this is what it looks like now I just went over it again and just like I'm um, straighten all of the little um, pieces I just wanted the, the pleat to um, look a little bit more to look a little better right you guys can have a better look at it now so what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is just to um, cut off the top part of it All right so you guys can see it a little better so that is what we so what I'm gonna do is just to go and cut off all of that all of those pieces to get the jagged edges but this is it and you guys can see the center line coming straight down yep okay guys now the next thing that you're gonna do is to ensure it's very windy as I said before but the next thing that you're gonna do is to ensure that you get your 18 and a half or 19 well to, in order to finish off at a 18 inch drop you're going to need your allowance probably half inch at the top and half inch at the bottom so you're trying to get like 19 inches so you want to get so from the center going down to where it's fall 19 20 inches anywhere about there because you're going to be losing um a few you're going to lose at least a half inch or a half inch and a half or so in in total so if you can get like 19 and a half or 19 inches that would be great this is actually 20 inches this is perfect that will give me more than enough space to work with and from here to here so from the center to here you're just going to be whatever the measurement is that you want along the top for me as i said before i want it to be 42 inches so you're just going to half it so using the mark from here that you have you're just going to use your center mark to one side and you mark off your 21 inches and you go to the other side and you mark the 21 inches then whatever it is that you need to cut off you just pin especially for me that the time is so windy but you just cut off whatever little piece that you need to cut off right but the main thing that you're gonna do now and remember I said you guys when you're pinning you are pinning in a line and you make sure that when whenever you're pinning you have something to use as a guideline and for me the top of the cardboard that is my guideline so now when I go to cut off the head of the hair I will have the top of the cardboard to use as my guide so I can get a straight cut going across
guys so this is how it looks now that the top of it is cut off now what I'm gonna do is to pick out the pins and lay it on the ground so you guys can get a better look of it because it's going to have a, a more of a Christmas tree look um, once it's the pins are taken out okay you guys so this is what it's going to look like you're gonna have a type of Christmas tree look once you finish but this is what a typical swag pattern looks like can even um make a smaller version of it but just be sure that whatever material you're gonna be using I just used a flimsy material to do this one but whatever material you're going to be using be sure to use a very durable one so you want to have a, a durable type of material this one is actually um very very thin so whatever it is that you're gonna be using to make your pattern just try and get a um, a fabric that is not as light as mine and remember you guys you're gonna have your pattern for a lifetime so you just want to get something that and actually take all of that wear and tear so you can have it to use multiple times all right everyone now I hope you learned something new on this video and I want to thank you guys for joining me join me again on another video be sure to go on ahead and check out my other channel I'm going to be leaving a link in the description box you guys just go on and check out all of the videos over on that channel. Be sure to check out all of the videos over on this channel. And I'll see you guys again on another video, alright? Thanks for watching. Bye!